Hello, I welcome you all to this learning session on IFRS for the SMEs. In this session, we will be discussing about section 5 of IFRS, which deals with statement of comprehensive income. So let's start. Learning outcomes. After completing this session, you will have understanding about the primary objective of section 5, the presentation of total comprehensive income which generally specifies what are the different ways in which an, ent an entity can present statement of comprehensive income. The third point would be minimum line items to be included under both the approaches. Same as balance sheet, IFRS does not specify any format for statement of comprehensive income. It's just specify the minimum line items. We will go through that in detail. So let's move on to the first topic, primary objective. The primary objective of this section is to provide guidance in respect of the minimum items to be presented. As I've discussed earlier, there is no specific format, the minimum items to be presented and how to present them. So in order to present them, section five provides two different approaches, a single statement approach or a two statement approach. Under single statement approach, the comprehensive income includes all the incomes and expenses, including other comprehensive income. So, which means you prepare one statement. Uh, you prepare one statement. Think of, think it of as a statement. Don't think of. You, you prepare one statement. Suppose statement of comprehensive income, revenue, expenses. You arrive at the net profit. After the net profit, in the continuation, in the in the continuation, you add other comprehensive income items. You add them up. And you arrive at, and you arrive at the, sorry, at the total comprehensive income. So in this case, a revenue, revenue, cost of goods sold. You arrive at gross profit, and after that, for example, net profit. And under single statement approach, you add the OCI items as well, and you arrive at the total comprehensive income. Sorry, total comprehensive income here. But on the two statement approach, this is prepared under one statement that's called income statement. And this is prepared, the OCI is prepared on the second segment, uh, under the second statement is called statement of comprehensive income. And the net profit is taken as a base. So which means you can either present all of these, all of this into either one statement under the single statement approach or under two statement. Till net profit one statement and take net net profit as an opening balance and add the OCI items. So you can search on the Google and uh, you can have an understanding on uh, how the illustrative would look like. So next, let's discuss on the minimum line items to be included. Let's start with the single statement approach. If you are following a single statement approach, you need to disclose at least the following minimum items: the revenue, the expenses. The finance cost along with any share of profit from investment that are accounted using the equity method which generally means your associates are any kind of joint ventures under the ies 28 under full f full ifrs that i'm saying and any profit or loss from discontinuing operations or any impairment gains or losses reversals from that along with that as we are preparing a single statement approach we need to add oci items the other comprehensive income items. So I just want to pin uh, pin out a pinpoint one more thing. Under the OCI, we have two items. The first, which get reclassified to the OCI, sorry, to the profit and loss, and the second one, which do not no reclassification is done on reclass or a recycle, is is done to the PNL. So if certain conditions are satisfied. Certain items are reclassified to the profit or loss account and some of them which do not reclassify to the profit or loss and directly adjusted in the retained earnings or in the balance sheet. So direct adjustments. So you need to bifurcate them between these two different categories. And the third one will be your any equity investments, any sorry, any equity accounted investments. And from that, if you have if you have gain, if you have any kind of other comprehensive income, you need to add them up into the respective OCI items. And you need to split them among the non-controlling interests. For example, if there is a ten thousand rupee, ten thousand dollars of profit, and you you hold eighty percent, which means eighty percent of the profit belongs to you. So this is your profit, profit attributable to the shareholders, and twenty percent belongs to the minority interest or to non-controlling interest. This comes up if 
from the group accounting when we're going to discuss group accounting we will understand so for the timing you need to understand that you need to provide a split up for this for the profit or loss and for the total comprehensive income both of them for both of them and if we are performing preparing a two statement approach then in such a case all the disclosures will follow all these disclosures will follow but the disclosures will be sorry all the items to be presented but the presentation will differ in which statement we need to we need to present for example this revenue and cost will will these items will be presented in the profit or loss or the income statement the oci items we will disclose in the statement of comprehensive income we will add it in the statement of comprehensive income this OCI item will come up in the statement of comp comprehensive income. This we will disclose in the income statement. So which means under both the approaches, the disclosures are same. The only difference is that where we need to disclose it or where we need to present these items. So just for the time being, just uh, please use disclosure and presentation interchangeably. I know it's it's not, but uh, for uh, for English, just understand this thing. Now the second point. Uh, the second point is this uh, OCI point. Uh, sorry, the split up. So if we are performing two sets, then in such a case for the profit or loss, this is applicable. Profit or loss and the total comprehensive income. Just bifurcate between the two items. The first, which will go to the uh, parent, and which will go to the non-controlling interest. So this is some dis some discussions on the statement of comprehensive income in respect of the IFRS for the SMEs. So I'll, I'll see you in the next lecture.